Hi guys, it's Baldrick here. In today's episode, I'd like to talk about PC gaming peripherals and more specifically in this episode, the different mice you can get for your specific game genres. So what I like to play is usually first person shooters and the occasional third person shooter. I'm not really into MMORPG games or I guess I'm a bit into RPG games like I guess Armour can sort of count as one or... Skyrim, I used to like that, and Elder Scrolls Online when that comes out, but they're all sort of still first person, and I guess they sort of follow the same thing as first person shooters, except with swords. But anyway, I'll be covering a vast variety of different, uh, I guess, genres for all you uh, gamers out there who don't know what mice to get, or what brand to even start looking at. So, you've got many different mice brands, you've got the Corsair, Logitech, Obviously, Razer, everyone knows Razer. There's even CM Storm. Still Series is what I use for, for my mice. Or oh, I've only gotten one, but I think it's really good. And you've also got, like, Genesis. I've just got a big list here, and it goes on and on. But for range you'd want to start looking at, if you're on a budget, I'd highly recommend some of the cheap Logitech mice for first-person shooters. Uh, cause they're a bit small, but they definitely do the job. I used to use one, in fact, for Logitech G300. Great for first-person shooters, and it only costs 30 Australian dollars, which is the cheapest gaming mouse you can probably get. It does feature... it's nothing very good, but it's got a nice sensor on it. It doesn't go above 2,500 DPI, which isn't a big deal. Uh, to be honest, you only need about... 3,000, but a lot of these mice contain 8,000, 8, I know mine does, but I only play at like 1,800, so you don't need all of that DPI to be honest, but it does help, it gives you better accuracy I reckon. Uh, so we'll start off with the first person shooters as we're already here, so with first person shooters what you want to look at is a good right and left click, you don't want it to be too small like some... MMO mice have it so, so you can fit other buttons and you shouldn't worry about the buttons on the side usually they come with two or four uh, whether that be anti-dextrous or just right or left-handed but I reckon if you're I reckon the best mice to get is anti-dextrous because I think that they are just they've got the they're just equal in size for both clicks and I think it's the best way to do it. It's like a controller. You you don't get right-handed controllers. There's nothing wrong with right-handed controllers if there are, but I think... And there's nothing wrong with right-handed mice. But if you're going to get your first mouse, I'd recommend it be ambidextrous. But there's nothing wrong if you really want to try out right or left-handed mice. Uh, usually with the right-handed ones, I think the left click's a bit bigger usually for your trigger, and I'm not really sure, I haven't really... I might have owned one, but that's about it. I prefer ambidextrous for the win. Anyway, uh, so what else you have to consider with gaming mice is whether the cord can obviously reach your PC, that should be a given with any peripheral, but also sort of avoid the wireless gaming mice unless you want to keep like a really neat setup because the wired ones will always be better you don't have to ever charge them and they're just more responsive you can get pretty beast uh polling rates on them like you'd aim for about 500 hertz plus and if it gives you the option of a thousand just use a thousand that's what i use uh also now, I think that's about it for the first person shooter gaming mice, and you also want a clickable scroll rule, so that means when you, it doesn't keep on scrolling, it stops, so you can switch your weapons easier, uh, but that's all you really have to look at, and also the, the software that comes with it, it doesn't have to be that good, all, all you really need to do is select your DPI. But that's up to you guys to choose. What some other people like to do, they like to put it up to maximum DPI and put the sensitivity in the game really low. I'm not sure how that works, but I just like to have it on my mouse and just leave the game sensitivity so I can have a universal sensitivity all round. Uh, now we're into MMO gaming mice. Uh, I don't really play too many MMOs, but I can tell you a bit about them. Uh, so what many MMOs uh, require is... Lots of uh, key macros, so that means you can type in a command and all you have to do is press the button and it 
does that command for you. I know some would consider that newbie, but I'm sure it's very helpful for all you MMO players, especially if you have to do a lot of commands at a time to do things. Uh, so what a lot of these m mice include is a number pad on, on the left or right side of your mouse, depending if you're... You definitely want to get your... You don't want ambidextrous uh, MMO mice, by the way, because you need the key where your thumb is. Uh, so they've usually got a number pad 1 to 6 or 1 to 9, and you, j you program each key to do a certain task, and that's about it. Uh, you can get them with fancy lighting, it doesn't really matter, and it's all about doing your research and how much you want to pay for it, so that's what it comes down to. If you've got a uh, ridiculous amount of money and you want to spend as much as you can, just look for the most expensive one, that's usually the best, uh, as most things are. If you pay more, you get more, but for gaming mice, you can easily get away with, I think, 40 to 50 dollar MMO gaming mice. I think the FPS ones are cheaper as they require less programming and just they're easier to produce. I think that's all for my uh, I guess mice video. Thanks for watching. Tell me in the comments what you guys use or if you would like any help. See you later guys. Have a nice day.